Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the day that the Lord has made. May we be glad and rejoice in it. Uh, God is good and all the time because that's his nature. He's brought us this far. He's our God, he's our savior, and he's our friend. We give him all the honor and all the glory. He takes his righteous praise in our lives. He's our God. We thank God for the weather change from a very hot weather to a very cold kind of environment. We are blessed to be alive to witness these beautiful weather changes, an assurance of the power that God possesses over us. He is abundantly wealthy in his wisdom and kindness. Those who trust in him will see him move mountains to provide for them. I do not know what you're dealing with today, but those who know their God, remember, they shall be strong and they shall do great exploits. We continue to do Bible study, and then today we are going to start again reading from the book of Matthew from chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10 talks about the 12 apostles, then them being sent out and persecutions the coming persecutions the teaching of jesus about the fear of god uh, confession of christ before men and divisions brought by christ and a cup of cold water it's a very bulky message and so when and when he had called his 12 disciples to him he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease now the names of the 12 apostles are these first simon who is called peter and andrew his brother james the son of of Zebedee and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Somath and Matthew the tax collector, James son of Alphaeus and Lebaus, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Issachariot, who also betrayed Jesus. Um, God, Jesus sending out the 12 apostles, these 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them saying, do not go into the way of the Gentiles and do not enter a city of the Samarians, Samaritans, sorry, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And also, as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead cast out demons freely you have received freely give provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts nor bag for your journey for two tunics nor sandals nor staffs for a worker is worthy of his food how now whatever city all town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and stay there till you go out. And when you go into the household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return with you. And whether and whoever will not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Uh, praise God, brothers and sisters. Uh, when G First of all, Jesus was a very good administrator in his ministry like his father not disorganized he did things according to the order of the heavenlies he first of all appointed men to work with he was a god 
He was a son of God that understood the power of delegation. He could have done everything on his own, but he chose to empower his people. Delegation of his duty empowered more people, more 12 out of if he was to only do the work alone. He understood the duty of working in teamwork and so it's important even us as children of God when we learn, want to excel at the work that we do managing the church and doing his duty we must be willing to train more people to stand in the gap when we are not able to stand. Jesus could not afford to be everywhere at the same time, especially when he was in the flesh, though he can do it now in the spiritual realm. He empowered the 12 and sent them out and with instructions that where you welcomed, you will bless. Where you're not welcomed, you will keep your whole, you withhold your blessing and they will be punished and their punishment will be severe than the one of Sodom and Gomorrah. But also what he asks these people is to go and in a place where they are welcomed and they find a place to stay, that's where those they will eat and drink. They will not carry anything. And so he says, you have received the gifts of the Holy Spirit to cast out demons for free. You will give them out freely. This is a message to us today who are selling gifts, who are selling uh, so many things for healing and stuff in church. Jesus gave freely and we must also give to others freely. When we do that, I can assuredly tell you that we stand in a place of safety, a place of protection, a place of the goodness of God and his abundant grace. It's important that we understand that. It's important that we open doors for many people to come in and when they come, sort out and get those who you can delegate to. If, the, if you delegated to 12, the 12 will also, talk, um, as they grow in experience, will also empower another 12. Before you know it, you have a church that is full and people knowledgeable. And you will not find challenges doing the work of God. Training helps you, the trainer, because you have competent people to stand in the gap when you're not able to. <laughs> Persecutions are coming. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Be aware of men, for they will deliver you up to, to, the, to cancel and surge you in their synagogues. You will be brought, forth, be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when you deliver, when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you shall you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you will, you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Now, brother, will deliver a brother to death, and the father has his child, and the child will rise up against the parents and cause them to be put to death and you will be hated by all of my by all you will be hated by all for my name's sake but he who endures to the end will be saved when they persecute you in this city flee to another <coughs> for assuredly i said to you you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes back. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master, but they have called 
if they have called the master of the house <coughs> Bilzebub hmm? if they have called the master of the house Bilzebub how much more will they call those of his household therefore do not fear them for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known god sends his apostles for ministry with a tough word and what he says here is what we see the apostles go through he says i'm sending you out to the wolves but you must be as wise as a serpent and as humble and harmless as a, a dove. This teaches us that in all that we do, we should be alert. To be alert calls for wisdom. And when you're alert, you'll be able to understand situations and you will maneuver through. And he says they will chase you from, if they chase you from one city, go to another if they chase you from that one go to another and jesus says that you will not have even finished all the cities in jerusalem by the time the lord the lord comes back and that is the end times and what i learned from this word in particular is that the world is not all going to accept salvation because jesus himself declared that by the time of the coming back of Jesus Christ and taking his place, we sh the, not all people will have learned and uh, walked in salvation. It has been declared so and so it shall be. All you need to do is to make sure that if you dwell as a minister in an area where people know God, uh, keep spreading the gospel until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who need God are still so many. Even in Africa where we are in hundreds of years, we are still badly off. There are so many people that have not heard the word of God. And he says the ministry of Christ would set people into a conflict those who are for christ and those who are not for christ will definitely disagree so you'll find a child believing and a parent not they fall out or a parent believing and a child not they fall out so it's important that we take note and also uh, the persecution that would come to these people for choosing christ is also emphasized And Jesus says they will hate him. They will tell them because of his name. And he says, if they've hated me first, surely it will not be strange that they will hate you too. If they've called me names before, they will call you names. But in all, remember a disciple is not above his master. And his teacher nor a servant above his master. Uh, Jesus teaches the fear of God. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the rooftops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both the soul and body in hell. Are not two spirals sold for a copper? coin and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will but the very hairs of your head are all numbered do not fear therefore you are of more value than many spirals god encourages us to boldly spread the gospel without fear to shout on the rooftops of what the lord can do and this is easy we've met people that have if you god has done something for you if he has saved you from the point of death you need to be able to shout his name on the rooftops nothing should limit you and of course 
he she also tells us that in all that we do while we shout at the rooftops he knows that the world will go up in flames you have heard people saying born again shout and everyone wants to silence them but jesus says don't fear those even if it means death if they kill you it's okay because they can only kill the body but they cannot kill the soul and he says you have one who can kill the soul so fear not Jesus, uh, the, the co, co, confess Jesus he before men. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, he will, he, I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, he will, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Brethren, today we have so many born again. But they do not want the world to know they are born again because of the reproach that is on the name of born again in this end of the world. And I think it's also an, a worldly thing. Brethren, Jesus says if you deny him here, he will deny you in glory. Why should we deny Jesus Christ? If we are sure of who he represents and what he has done for us, surely we would want to shout him on the rooftops and so christ brings a division uh salvation in itself is a witness of what god is saying here that uh it sets apart it creates a whole situation in the family especially when there are those who have believed and others that have not believed those who don't believe in jesus christ surely they believe in another power and it's important that we take note and understand that Jesus, what does Jesus say? Say, sorry, do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against his mother, her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And the man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life will, for my sake will find it. <laughs> The conflict comes from the fact that salvation messes up things for those who are not saved. When salvation comes in the family, their gods will disappear. And that explains what will happen afterwards. And so the same scripture that God talks about in the book of Micah, in the book of Micah, that uh, your worst enemies will be the ones in your household. He emphasizes it again in the book of Matthew. And um, a cup of cold water, he who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives, and he who receives me receives he, him who sent me. He who receives the prophet in the name of, the, of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward and he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward and whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple assuredly i say to you he shall be no but he shall by no means lose his reward when you receive jesus christ Sorry, he, when people receive us who preach the word of God, Jesus says they will have received Jesus Christ. And when they receive Jesus Christ, who is in us, they will have received he who sent him. So, one who receives the word of God will have received the message through you who is delivering it. Above it, 
they will take with them Jesus Christ and inside of Jesus Christ is the Father. That's what I understand. How beautiful it is knowing that in your heart sits Jesus and the Father. But for him to sit there, your house must be clean. Jesus, oh God, does not mix with evil. He does not mix with that. Remember on Mount Sinai? Uh, we're going to read only chapter chapter 11. I'm going to be doing two chapters because the book of Matthew is really rich with teachings. When we reach Mark, we are going to be summarizing. Uh, John ba the Baptist sends messengers to Jesus. Now, uh, this was a very sad story that John the Baptist encountered Jesus. He baptized him and he declared him to the world. But when John the Baptist was going through tribulations after he had been captured and he was in prison, he sent his disciples to verify whether indeed this was he who was to come. And such was a shame. Let's hear what the word of God says. Now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples that he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. And when John had heard in, the, in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said to him, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see, the blind see, and the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them, and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. And they departed. Jesus began to set the multitudes concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man clothed with soft garments? In, indeed, those who wear soft clothes are in king's houses but what did you go out to see a prophet yes i say to you and more than a prophet for this is he of whom it is written behold i send my messenger before you who will prepare your way before you remember we we read this in the book of zachariah i think chapter 13 Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to receive it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But to what shall I liken this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to the companions and saying, We pray, we play the flute for you and you do not dance. We mourn to you and you do not lament. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and you and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a wine barber, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is justified for the children of God. An amazing word of God. John doubts, and when he doubts, God said, Jesus sends a message back. He says, go and tell him what you're seeing. Let him be the one left to decide. And the word of God also says that from the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and those who take it, take it by force. <coughs> and he also declares that John the Baptist was indeed the Elijah. When the word of God says that the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence and those who take it, take it by force, it requires us to understand 
that this is warfare. And when the word of God says that we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against powers, why is it saying we do not fight anyway? Because we are in a war situation. Until you begin to feel that it's a battle, the smartest, the one with the blood, is the one that wins the battle. When John came, the story changed. It became, John the Baptist came, the story changed. It became a war situation in the heavenlies. Those who take it, take it by force. And it affects the, it also discusses the integrity of the people, people being hypocrites. When John the Baptist came fasting, they said he had a demon. And when Jesus came eating, they said he was a glutton. That tells you that you should never work to please men. Because no one can please men. Let us work on pleasing God. Because he understands why he does things the way he does them. Woe to the impenent cities. Then he began to rebuke the cities in which most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. Woe to you, Sharazim. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For it is the mighty works which were done in the in we, it, it is the mighty works which were which were done in you had been done sorry for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes but I say to you it will be more tolerant for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than you and you couple cap, 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 neum, I beg your pardon you capilanaum who are exalted in heaven will be brought down into heads for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sidon it would have remained until this day. But I say to you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. The children of God really had a very difficult heart, so disobedient. And that explains why the door had to be opened anyway for us, the Gentiles, because the children of God, God had hardened their hearts because he had wanted that me and you would also tap into the goodness of the Lord and get saved, the Gentiles. Otherwise, if he had left it only for the Jews, we would still be here helpless. We thank God for that, for giving us an opportunity to worship him. Like he did to the Cherubites in the book of Jeremiah chapter 35. So he's done for us, the children of God in this part of the world. Jesus gives true rest. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and, for, and, and have revealed them to babies. So, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one whom the Son reveals, uh, reveals him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm great, I'm gentle and slow to in anger, and you are, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I'm going to be stopping here today. It's been a crazy day, and uh, I'm struggling with uh, a bit of flu and a cold 
and I'm going to try and make sure that I end at this word of God, understanding that Jesus says in his word that he is able to carry our yoke which is heavy and he takes away and he gives us his which is very light. He had come to lift our burdens. Why do we still carry shame? Why do we still carry pain? Why do we kind carry all kinds of limitations when Jesus has made uh, it a free will gift given to us for free? We need to be able to return to God and surrender to him and let him guide us in a place of victory, in a place of abundance, in a place of restoration. Jesus is here. He's here with us. He loves us. He's waiting upon us to surrender our lives to him in salvation. Remember, this is Bible study. If you do not feel I'm covering all details, that's why I take time to read word by word so that you'll be blessed. I have been blessed. It's been a very beautiful evening. I pray that God will be able to strengthen you and equip you and keep you until tomorrow when we load another video. Sorry, yesterday's video has come out late for reasons beyond our control, but the enemy has no authority. He has no power. He loses it and it all belongs to Jesus. We thank God. We worship you and we give him all the glory. Until tomorrow when we meet again, may God bless you. Have a good night and bye-bye.